Welcome back to another episode of Beers with Ben, everybody. I'm Sean. And I'm Ben. That's Ben. Yes. Here we are back at the brew hall. Um, we're able to actually be downstairs today because of unfortunately. The, yeah, the condition of things right now means that we're closed after six uh, on uh, Wednesday nights. But uh, so the cool, cool part is that we can get back downstairs. Yes. Yeah. Last uh, time we did this, we were in a secret location. Very secret, very yes. secret location. Worked out well, though. Um, uh, very comfortable. Thanks for joining us. It was very comfortable. Um, I'm going to refresh my Facebook feed here, folks, because I want to see if you have any questions or comments for us. I'm just going to lead off by saying we're going to talk a little bit about Ole Mole, and we're going to talk a little bit about Prairie Bill Warmer, which is our winter warmer. Uh, we, uh, I'm gonna have our camera person help us out. If you can shift the phone just a little bit to the right, we're catching a little weirdness in our picture. There we go. It'll catch up for to me on my computer here in just a second. Thank you. Um, so let me talk about what's on the table first. Okay. We'll get to beer. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're gonna talk about gift packs and bombers. Uh, we're gonna talk about uh, liquor store sales. We're going to talk about downtown businesses um, and some infusions, but let's get started then uh, with Holy Moly. That's what we have in front of us. It is. So I'm going to set this up by saying that it's a Bach beer, B-O-C-K. B-O-C-K. And it's got other stuff in it. So let's get, we don't want to talk a ton about this because I know we have in the past, but yes. what is a Bach beer? <clears throat> well, a traditional Bach is a style beer out of Germany. Um, Traditionally, it was brewed uh, more this time of year, kind of when it got a little colder. Um, very much uh, you know, Munich driven malt. Uh, <clears throat> it gets kind of a weird name. Uh, it, it comes from the, the, the town of Einbeck. Mm. And a big, uh, the Einbeck beer would be matched by the same Bach. Bach in German is Gout. And so uh, a lot of people that see Bach beers, they'll see it kind of associated with goat uh, for that reason. Um, typically it's a little bit darker, uh, kind of brown, not quite black, but usually a little bit more of a brown color. Malty, sweet, not overly hoppy. Uh, in fact, uh, it's pretty rare that you actually get a lot of hop in the nose. A uh, little bit of balancing on the palate. But then that's all moved because we completely destroy anybody <laughs> to, uh, to smell or taste hops with this beer. So. Well, and I'm, I'm going to draw on that, that uh, malty sweetness yeah. as a base to balance out yes. what you do to it to make it a mole, yeah. a spicy beer. So maybe a short list of ingredients that got put together to make the mole? Yeah, so th this beer originally was one of the first well, this is kind of the first seasonal beer that we made here when we first opened. Uh, a good friend of mine and former brewer up at NP Brewing, uh, Jason Davis, um, came over and we brewed this beer together. It was just kind of something that he and I put our heads together on and wanted to do something traditional but also kind of a little bit fun. And so uh, we came up with this idea of putting uh, kind of mole spices in there. Uh, obviously, traditional mole has a whole lot of stuff in it. Uh, that wouldn't really necessarily go uh, very well with the beer. But uh, a lot of the fun flavors like chocolate, like cinnamon, like uh, you know, hot pepper, um, all those things can blend well in a beer. And so that's kind of what we've been working on with this beer. Every year it's been a little bit different. The base is always the same. The spicing kind of is a little fluid. Uh, changes a little bit. It, it, well, it changes a little bit just because, you know, sometimes the peppers are a little hotter. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we find Tahitian, you know, or, or not Tahitian, uh, like uh, Celion cinnamon instead of traditional, uh, you know, Sri Lankan cinnamon. I mean, it just kind of depends on uh, sources. But. Well, and, and that's kind of a great thing to bring up is that this is locally sourced stuff. I mean, it's what yeah. we find in our local markets and grocery stores that goes into this beer. Yeah, I, you know, I, there's a nice little Mercado uh, right down the street here that I, I run into, and, you know, they have the bulk that I need for the amount of volume that I'm making. Mm -hmm. um, uh, a lot, you know, more authentic and, and also much more uh, readily available than running to some of the, the stores around here. So it's always fun to be able to go into a, a local uh, uh, market and, you know, find some, some local stuff like that. So. It's, it's a 
a fun thing for me as a, someone behind the bar to tell our customers that, that when we have beers that have fancy word, adjuncts, or yes. added to it, that it's, it's real, it's natural, it's local. Yes. It's, it, it's, there's no fake uh, flavoring going on here at all. Yeah, and one of the really fun things about the size of brewery that we are is that you know, we're making about 250 gallons of beer at a time, and that allows us to be able to still use you know, for, uh, actual ingredients. We're not using uh, tinctures, we're not using extracts, just because while well, those certainly work, especially on bigger volumes where just the you have to. taking you know hundreds of pounds of, of berries, for example, just might not be uh, you know, something that's available to us. But uh, at, at the volume that we do it at, it's usually easy enough to find some local stuff um, or, or fresh ingredients that uh, try to really get those uh, fun flavors. So. Uh, I have an idea. Uh, yes, come up. yes, yes, yes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> There's like a production crew behind the camera, folks. It's not really. No. Uh, uh, Pat is Pat is a huge fan of Holy Moly. Yes. He just waved in and he's drinking one right now with mm -hmm. us. Pat, Ho hope it's not too hot for you this year. We'll we'll clean glasses and there you go. Virtually clean glasses with you too. Uh, Pat's a, a, a great customer and uh, a member down here, a lifetime member at Brew Hall. Yep. Pat, thank you. Uh, so th this is one uh, great beer we have, and I'm just going to put a break in our beer tasting just for a little bit. Come on up with those if you want to, Ryan, and we'll get to it. Thank you very much. You right, sir. I'm going to point at some other things on our table here. We have a few bombers of our mandala from last year, but barrel aged. Uh, the Belgian quad, it, and remind us what barrel this was in, please. So that was in a French cognac barrel. Um, which is kind of a hoot to, to, to use because you get so used to it as a brewer you know, uses some barrels, these traditional like whiskey and wine size barrels, you know, 55, 59 gallons, and all of a sudden you you get this, uh, what was that, like 70, 80 gallons? Yeah, it was like 80 something gallon. <laughs> um, and so that was, that was kind of fun to not like get down the stairs, uh, that was fun, but, but also uh, uh, working with uh, those different flavors. I bring that up because it helps me with a little segue. Okay. Try a little uh, to do that around here. So we have a few of these left. And so what we're putting out there is that any annual member renewal or new membership down here, annual membership, gets a free barrel uh, Belgian Quad Bomber. We have a few left. And um, it's a fantastic beer. So if you need a little extra like push to convince you to get that annual membership or to renew your annual membership, here it is, right in front of me. This is this is a treat. I, I, when people leave here with these, and I sell them uh, over the bar, I'm like, this this is a good, this is fantastic, and you're not going to find this very many other places yeah. at all. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, we're just going to put that out there. So, some other uh, December offers out there uh, that we have. Um, if you're an annual member already, um, feel free to come in and buy crawlers, and you get a dollar off. It's a it's a way to extend your your member discount to what we can do right now because we're not pouring any pints. So uh, get a dollar off on your crawlers if you're already a member. Um, if you have a craft tab or passport book or any of those things that can help get uh, a buy one, get one beer at any brewery around the area or the state, we're gonna honor those. And the way we're doing that is if you buy three individually priced crawlers, and when I say individually because normally when you come in here, um, get a little bit of a discount on packs of three crawlers. But if you buy three individually priced ones, normal priced ones, you get the fourth one for free. So if you're uh, someone who doesn't frequent the brew hall too often or makes the rounds uh, on the weekends, as I normally see a lot of customers on yep. the weekends with these books, uh, stop on down because you can still use that towards a free crawler after the uh, three full priced ones. Um, I have a list of things, folks. I'm going to keep going. Here it is. If you're a regular Turtles customer, and by the way, this is a great partnership that we have going on downtown. Just one example of a few. Um, if you're going to receive a five dollar discount on your beer orders down here, uh, twenty five dollars or more. If you come in with a Turtles receipt dated any time during the shutdown, so that's uh, November twenty first and beyond. 
Uh, bring that receipt in, show it to us, and you'll get that $5 off a $25 order or greater. Uh, in addition, if you spend $25 or more down here, we're going to give you this coupon for turtles, and let me read from this. It's $5 off your food order of $25 or more. So we're just trying to work together with our, our neighbors and friends at Turtles yeah. uh, downtown here to uh, get you some deals. Uh, here's what it comes down to, folks. Uh, right now, we're not seeing too much of a glimmer of hope on either a federal or state stimulus package for things. Yeah. We, we just don't know where that's going to land, right? And uh, whether it be the state legislature in recess and post-election Congress not doing a whole lot right now. Right. Yeah. This is not a political discussion, <coughs> by the way. This is just Please. the facts, right? So uh, uh, we we uh, don't know what's going to happen. I bring that up because your business, to folks like us and the other businesses downtown, the small business owners in Shakopee, means a ton. So we're trying to entice you to come down with my list of deals, but really what it comes down to is helping us uh, get through this time. So. I, there's more. Um, if you buy a $25 gift card, which by the way makes a great stocking stuffer for the holidays, you get a free 16 ounce can of beer. Why is that special? Normally we can't sell uh, 16 ounce cans of beer down here, and we still can't sell them, but we have some that we can give you. We have um, a few in the cooler down here, put together three different styles, put it in the cooler. Yep. If you buy a $25 gift card or more, get a can of beer. Um, and then one of the, a couple other things, we have a gift pack. If you're the beer enthusiast in your life, we have these gift packages. So what's in here is an empty growler, 64 ounce glass, mm -hmm. and two tulip glasses. That's what we're drinking from tonight. Yes. Um, you can buy one of these, and if you really want to add on something special, you can get the growler filled. Um, there's a couple ways to do that. I can, we can definitely fill the growler. Yep. And or work, we can give you a gift card towards that, the value of uh, a growler fill, which is typically about 12 bucks. Yep. And depends on the beer. Yep, yep. depends on the beer, but that is something that you could leave with um, for someone who really loves either Shakti Brew Hall beer, or if you have a beer lover in life who doesn't know about the Brew Hall, yeah. introduce them to our, our stuff with this package. We love seeing new people. Yeah, it's great. And then we have the safe and warm package. You can get a brew hall mask. You can get, I'm looking for one, I think there's one over my shoulder here. You can get one of these fancy, lovely beanies that I'm wearing. Ryan's beanie, we like to call it down here. Um, get you a beer, brew hall sticker, and then a crawler of beer of your choice. Um, fantastic over the counter oh, beer one. Grace is wearing one right now. There's a brew hall mask. <laughs> uh, thank you to our friend and beer tender, Tracy, yes. who is down here every so often. Who we'll helped put these together for us? Yeah. Uh, so we have quite a supply of them. We're it's ready for you. And yep. It's a nice looking mask. Stretchy, I like yep. this guy. Yeah, perfect. So that takes care of that. We get to talk about another beer. Yay, Prairie Hill Warmer. So here's my struggle as a beer server. Yes. I don't know what to say about this. Yeah. What what style is this beer? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Prairie Hill Warmer. It's a winter warmer. Yeah. So that's, that's the, the big words we use to like categorize it. Right. But what that means is kind of a mystery. Right. So what does it mean for us? So so typically a winter warmer you know comes out around this time. Uh, winter, you know, a lot of the time it's it's meant for like November, December, kind of uh, uh, you know uh, Dick and so many. Yeah, uh, it, it, it's kind of that Christmas Carol kind of uh, atmosphere that you often see depicted on like the cover art of these different beers. It, you know, that's because it is this kind of year. The, the Christmas season is a lot when you see these beers come up. And the problem is, is there is no real definition on what a winter warmer is. It, it's often um, you know subcategorized into two separate styles of beer. Kind of the British strong ale variant. It's, it's not a true British strong ale, but it certainly is a British ale. It's stronger. I mean, this one is 8.8%. Or in what they would call the Wassel style of beer. Um, funny thing. But we can talk about that in a minute. Um, this particular one, the, the one that you would find in Crawlers, one that, you know, had we been able to, to be open and, and 
invite you guys in. Um, you'd be able to sit down and have it. It's much more in that British strong ale style. Uh, it's a little bit darker than uh, traditional. Um, you know, this is not quite black, but uh, it, it's quite dark. Whereas, you know, you typically see with a British strong ale a little bit closer to like a garnet or a ruddy brown color. Um, this is just a little bit darker, like the night outside right now. Uh, it's kind of what we're going for. Um, you know, so, you know, uh, you know, chocolate characteristics, it's not overly hoppy. There is a little bit of hop characteristic to it. It's not overly carbonated either. Um, kind of in that traditional British cask style. This is not a beer that we typically try to like charge it with a lot of CO2. So not a big head on it. It's not gonna like blow bubbles in your mouth or anything like that. Um, but it's fuller body, a lot more maltiness to this one. A little bit of hops. Um, can you talk about the grain bill just a little bit? <clears throat> a lot of dark stuff. Um, it, 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 it's, it's mostly a base of Maris Otter, um, which is a very traditional British style of, of uh, malt, uh, a little bit of chocolate malt in there, a little bit of black malt to add that color. Um, so you're getting a little bit of the light cafe au lait coffee characteristic, that, that kind of milk chocolate characteristic comes from those. It's not super roasty. It's not. But it no, is dark. It is dark. Um, you know, it's not going to be in that you know, cold pressed coffee. Mm. Um, it's not bitter. It, it doesn't have a lot of those stout or characteristics that, that they might be used to. Um, you're much more going for kind of that roundness, that, that uh, sweetness uh, on the palate. Um, easy to drink, a little bit alcoholic though, and yeah. that strong characteristic. And like I said, this one's 8.8, .8, so nothing to sneeze at. The visual picture I get, <coughs> if you visit, visit a pub yeah. in the UK or anywhere like that, they, they draft the beer, it's a beer ending, right? Yep, I guess it pumps. Yep. Pulls the beer up out of the cask. Yes. And so the carbonation level, it doesn't need to be high because it's not being pushed by anything. It's not being pushed by anything. Yeah. And, and so this is this is what you're going to get. Yeah, I mean, with this. traditionally what they would do is they would put this into a Birkin or a Hogshead or some kind of you know barrel-like vessel that they can draw from. Mm -hmm. um, when there's still a little bit of, of sugar left to ferment. Mm -hmm. And so just like how, you know, if, if there's any home brewers out there, how you would you know, put your beer into like a, a bottle uh, with a little bit of extra sugar or put it in a little bit early and let that, that final fermentation happen and carbonate the beer in the bottle, that, that uh, uh, bottle finish. That finish yeah. kind of mm -hmm. characteristic. That's kind of what they do. Um, that's the, the same idea as what they're doing with like the, the pins and the casks and the, uh, the Perkins, the hottest head, all those different vessel sizes uh, and in traditional British um, style of brewing. The problem is that it's not very carbonated, right? Um, you get that nice nitro characteristic out of it, but you don't get a lot of bubble in it. And so um, if, if you're a beer snob out there, it's about 1.8 volumes of CO2 in this one. Um, but yeah, it's, this is not a overly uh, effervescent style of beer at all. Too. We're going to come back to the LaSalle thing in a second. Yes. And I'm going to drop some other things in here. Um, one big point we want to make, if you are enjoying any of these beers, like Pat is enjoying his Holy Moly right now uh, with us, and uh, all the other stuff we've talked about. By the way, if you want to know, like, gosh, I'm watching this, but what's on tap right now, or what's available, go to our website, shakabeebrewhall.com. Uh, clearly you're watching us Facebook right now, but you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, but our website has a listing of everything that's available in crawlers and growlers here on site. But also, um, you, you, you can use that to find out what's available, potentially available in the liquor stores around the metro. Uh, if you're not a Shakopee local and you enjoy our beers, you've been here, you know you love what we've got, check us out in the various liquor stores around the area. I went out delivering all over yesterday. <laughs> I, I probably put 100 miles on the van, just putting putting beers on sh on shelves. Um, if you want to see our beers or a style of beer in your local liquor store, let us know. Let your local liquor store know. Uh, a shout out to Doreen. Thank you, Doreen. Yes, in Brooklyn, it, the shouting out happened in Brooklyn <laughs> Center. Uh, she she requested a beer at the her local high V in Brooklyn Center, and it happened. It, hey, hard headed dreamer is in your liquor store. Excellent. Excellent. Um, One of my favorites. Yeah, a, a fantastic choice. 
Um, so again, if you have a beer that you'd like to see uh, of ours in your local liquor store, let us know, let your liquor store know, and we can uh, see what we can do to make that happen. Yes. Uh, we're gonna go into the category of infusions, which is why awesome. I brought up the sale. Yes. So that's based on this beer, isn't it? Yes. Right? So, I mean, I, I, again, very much um, a divergent path of what you'll see when, when you, uh, you're looking for a winter warmer in the store. Um, the Wassel beer, the Wasail beer, uh, this is a style of beer that uses that same kind of base, but is spiced. And so, uh, kind of traditional mulling spices for this time of year. Uh, orange and clove and cinnamon and nutmeg. You know, uh, these type of uh, uh, traditional baking spice flavors are what you're going to find in the water. It's, it's a savory spice. It is. It's not a hot spicy It's not spice. a hot spice at all. Uh, holy moly is a yeah. hot spicy yeah. spice. Yes. This is a more of a savory thing. It is. Yeah. Yes. Orange and coriander and... Uh, uh, orange and cardamom and, yeah. and nutmeg and, and cinnamon and all that stuff. Yep, yep. Think flavorful Christmas cookies. Exactly. Yeah. 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 You've got it. So, our sale is going to be available on December 5th. Uh, yes. Coming out soon. Yes. This, uh, this weekend. Um, we have we made it before? Sorry? Have we made it before? We have, we have made it before. We have made it. We've uh, actually made it every year. We've been, uh, every winter that we've been open, um, we, we've made it. And it's just one of those, those fun uh, stories, you know, the whole wassail beer, uh, or the whole wassail concept. Uh, here we go wassailing. Um, uh, I just love the, the, the backstory on how, you know, you would actually make a wassail, which, which is traditionally like a, an apple, cider, mm. orange uh, kind of punch. You would make it, you know, in, in, uh, in Victorian London to uh, basically cause people to not to convey your home. <laughs> I, I love the story how you would actually use it because uh, they would come along uh, a drunken Masses would come along singing carols with the expectation that you would give them something, coins, or in this case, some kind of punch mm -hmm. to, to satiate their, their thirst. <laughs> uh, if you didn't, they would invade your house. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, in, in other words, they won't go until they get some. <laughs> so, yeah. Yes. So, uh, those, those uh, traditional spices of that punch are, are what we're aiming for in the Wasser beer. And we've done it every year. Uh, I really like the recipe that we've come up with. Um, we're, we're constantly told by people that are off on, uh, off doing little vacations this time of year that they miss it and they, mm -hmm. when am I going to make it again? It's a one time year thing. It's one time. So, so uh, here's your fair warning. Yeah, exactly. Uh, whether you want to drink it now or save it a little closer to the holidays, better buy yes. it now. It'll uh, keep. It'll keep. It'll keep. Uh, to, to that point, we do a lot of canning down here these days, yes. and so we work hard to make sure that no oxygen gets in our cans. Yes. Um, whether we're filling by hand behind the bar here in the crawlers, or using our canning machine, uh, my god, that thing has like three steps to make sure there's no oxygen in that can. And you're getting good at it. I'm you're getting better at it. I don't know, good is, we'll get there, but uh, yeah, we cranked through many, many cases of beer this yes. Monday, it was great. Uh, but rest assured that um, our canning practices allow the beer to stay fresh on the shelf for a while. Yes. Um, one great thing about a growler is that you get a large amount of beer. Uh, the bad part is it doesn't necessarily stay fresh for a super long time. Yeah, I know I drink that pretty quick. Yeah. Right? Especially if you crack it open. Yes. Uh, if you're with a growler, you get a growler, drink it. Yep. Yep. But if it's you and a couple, you know, you and another person, you, it might be a challenge. That's where these crawler cans are great. You get a couple beers each out of each can. And our 16 ounce cans that you find in our liquor stores, they'll last quite a while. Yes. They're sealed up real well yep. and no oxygen. So uh, a great thing there. Uh, Sarah chimed in and said she'd like to see something with jalapeno. Um, so I'm going to go back to our holy moly. It, are there jalapenos in this? Not jalapenos. Um, uh, Puya peppers and guajillo peppers are in that one. Um, a lot of them. <laughs> and so pounds and pounds of every so often when we've had holy moly, we've taken a little bit of that when yeah. we were doing pins and we jacked that up even yes. more. So that might be a great suggestion, Sarah, where we make a super hot version of holy moly. Yeah, I mean, you certainly find beers that have jalapeno in them. Uh, jalapeno is a little bit difficult to use. Uh, it, it's a very clean flavor, even though it's, it's hot, it's, 
it's a very clean flavor, and so something dark like this is just gonna get uh, hit a little off. Yeah. Soon, so, so um, yeah. Do I get a little bite on the on the? Sarah asks again. Do you get a little bite on this? Yeah, you do. Yeah, you get a, a bite on this. I mean, it's yeah. it's not chomping down on a pepper bite, but it, right. um, it leaves a little tingle on your tongue. For sure. Yeah. The intention of this beer is to be able to drink it like a normal beer, and as you're drinking it, that buildup is happening, you know, on the back of your palate, the back of your throat, on the back of your tongue. Yeah. And so, by the time you're done with it, uh, this is not a crushed beer. You know, you're not going to yeah. do four or five of these. Um, but this is very much a beer that, by the end of it, you're going to feel the heat. Um, it shouldn't be all night. You know, just for a minute or two. Um, it, it, it's a it's a fun burn. It's a pleasant burn. Sarah, so I just took a sip. I feel it a little bit on the back sides of my tongue. Yeah. And down my throat, just a little bit. Yeah. And uh, so it's it's there. It's it's warm, hot. It's it's right in there. Yeah. So uh, for those of you who might be going, oh my gosh, I, <laughs> spice. It, it's not that bad, but it also won't leave you disappointed because right. It, it, it's right there. It's right. right in the middle. Yeah, you're gonna know there's heat to it, but it, it shouldn't cause you too much problem. Uh, another infusion that we want to talk about that's coming out actually on the fourth yes. is a pineapple. It's a pineapple oh, uh, Odie. Oh, Odie, that's what Yep, it. so um, this is our, our current uh, variation of the Odie that goes base um, using the, uh, the Sultana hop, which has very much a pineapple characteristic to that hop. Uh, and, um, again, for those beer geeks out there, this is also a hop that used to be called Denali. So uh, if you haven't heard Sultana, it's a newer. Uh, Name for that same optimale. Um but a lot of pineapple in that, in that uh, hop. And so uh, using actual pineapple uh, to age on uh, really should bring out that even more. So, so I'm going to get to the actual pineapple in a second. I, I just want to review the Odi Miko face with you. This is first of all the name was just kind of for fun and it stuck. So yeah, it's stuck. And if you know what what when we say Odi Miko face and you giggle. Then you got it, right? Yeah. If you don't get it, Google Bodie McBoat face, and then you'll know all about it. But we have a this Odie is a rotating uh, hazy IPA, New England, we're going to call it. Yes. It is about as hazy as it can possibly get. It really it's is. Yeah. Extremely opaque. Uh, but what we're trying to do is use a different citrus hop each time. Uh, yeah. And just to make it interesting. Yes. And uh, it's. 45% of the uh, grain bill yep. is oats. Yes. So that adds a little mouth feel to it, a creaminess. Yes. Uh, certainly creates some haziness. It's not a shy beer. It's not a shy beer. Not a shy beer. It, it, it's, it's not a uh, over the top uh, bitter bite. I mean, there's not very much bitterness to this beer at all. Just like a traditional New England idea that so many people like up there. It's not a bitter idea by any means, but uh, it's not shy either. Yeah. So, we took this beer, which has some hoppy pineapple notes, yes. pineapple hoppy notes, and we're actually adding pineapple to it. Yes. So our pineapple source our is our neighbor right around the corners, and, Robbie's, and also our, our dinner tonight. Our dinner tonight, by yes. the way. <laughs> <laughs> is, um, they do a pineapple bowl. They do. And so they had some pineapples yes. to, to use. We were gifted some pineapples. And yeah, I mean, and we, 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 we've used uh, Bravis as a source for some fruit in the past. And, um, you know, they have a lot of excess pineapple uh, making their product, and we need pineapple sometimes. And so yeah. it's, a, it's an action made in heaven, really. So it's awesome. Yeah. So look we can sit on a blender all day. <laughs> <laughs> right? right? I'm sure I'll be enlisted to help. Uh, so, a pineapple Odie the Goat Face on the 4th, a Wassail on the 5th, using yes. Prairieville Warmer. Um, the regular Prairieville Warmer is on, we talked about that, that's right here in this glass. Our Holy Moly is on, it's right here. And, uh, yeah, here's what it comes down to, folks. During this shutdown time, which, frankly, probably will last longer than the 18th, Yeah. Just. Sean's forecast here. Your business, uh, to for us and the other downtown businesses in Shakopee, mean a ton. Yes. So come down and see us. We are open. Yeah, we can't see people. I'm looking around the room and we've got all our chairs stacked up. But we still have beer down here for you, and we're glad to put it out there. It's, it's still the same great product that we've always had. Uh, take it home, give it as gifts. We have gift options, whether it be uh, this gift package or any of our merch. We're uh, kind of behind some t-shirts here 
and, and things like that. I've got the Ryan Beanie on. Who can say no to that, right? Uh, it, we have options. So help support us. I know that uh, I've been trying my best to give a little business to some of our folks around the corner here. Yes. And uh, whether it be restaurants, uh, some of the other storefronts downtown, come see us downtown at, at, in Shakopee, even if you're from out of town. Yes. Help support us. It really goes a long way. We're not closed. We're just doing business differently. That's really what it comes down to. I think we're going to wrap it up here, Ben. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So whether you're a fan of our stalwarts of Cinco de Chaco or Loki's Daughter, um, we have some other infusions from last weekend still on. The Michelada is on. And we have still some gingerbread. A little bit. A little bit of gingerbread bit. from yeah. our hard-headed dreamer. Um, whether it's uh, a few crawlers at 101, the Odie McOat Oat, Odie McOatface, trying something new we have down here, come and get it. Shopkeepybrewhall.com, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and of course Facebook, and keep up with us, and we'll be in touch soon. See you in a couple weeks, everyone. Thank you so much. Cheers.